Hey, you're listening to Spanners on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, and I'm in a shed. In the shed with the best of the net. Spanners ready. And I'm talking to fellow shed dweller, guitarist, soundscaper, voiceover artist and musician, Liam Taylor. Hi, Liam. Hey, Spanners. How are you doing? Welcome to my shed. I know it's not quite as big as your shed, (laughs) but I am going to say that in a shed off, I would be happy to go shed versus shed. Shed versus shed. How many rooms has your shed got? It's just one room. It's a shed. One room. Whereas yours is more of a condo. Condo. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Uh, three, two big rooms, one little room, and I guess you'd call it a hallway or a kitchenette. <laughs> I think once you have running water, it's not a shed any anymore. I yeah. win. But I'm not here <laughs> just to show off how much better my shed is than your shed. Um, today we're talking about basically what you do mm-hmm. in many ways, which is producing music away from a traditional band set up although you're a guitarist and you can play in a band yeah but with the with the propagation and and ease of these modern music techniques the question i want to ask you in a one word answer liam taylor is music ruined now uh yeah 100 percent. music is 100 completely irreparably ruined yeah, it's ruined yeah it's gone forever okay so this is now a talk <laughs> radio show because all music is ruined well, it's okay we can play music from the past and the thing is you don't have to go back too far before all music is pretty traditionally guys in a studio either plucking strings or or blowing through a thing. Yeah, that's true. But like, I think the impact that music producers and audio editors have had on music has kind of been hidden a little bit. If you think about a band that's... Um, I mean, who's really massive? The Sex Pistols. Everyone knows the Sex Pistols, but the amount of editing that went into getting the... Uh, what's his name? The uh, the bassist. Can't remember his name. That's bad, isn't it? We could Google it. Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols bassist. It wasn't Johnny Rotten, was it? That would be... Uh, it says Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious. Um, Sex Pistols, for example, their bassist could not play in time. Like, at all. Ever. Ne- couldn't do it. It wasn't important. He had fun hair and a nose piercing. That's why he was in the band. But he could not play bass. So they either had to get someone else to just play bass in his space and then just swap him out no. for the gigs. Yeah, man. Or they would just edit it up and put the bass in time with what the music should be. So, like... I think I think people have been tinkering with music in ways you would not imagine way longer than uh, just the last few years. And I suppose that's why a lot of the time you would go and see a live band and you go, huh, that's not what I was expecting. Yeah. And also why Top of the Pops yeah. was fairly rigidly a, a, a mimed show yeah. to the point that Oasis used to demand to go on there and, and do it live. They wouldn't let them. So they would put their guitarist up as the lead singer and have Noel Gallagher just sat at the drums pretending to bash away. Uh, so I guess the broader question we're asking is, is the convenience of these digital recording and post-production techniques that you described there, because everyone can get hold of it now and the technology is much easier, does that mean that the landscape of music is moving towards genres that use that, like rap, dance, disco, pop, and things like rock and band band music, basically you, guitars, are are less popular now? I think so. I don't know if it's entirely down to technology. I think like rock music and punk sort of had its day. And I think just naturally we're going to go towards something new sounding like uh, hip hop, like dance music, jungle, drum and bass, all of that. But I think that's just the natural way of things like heavy metal started because they got this new technology that could distort guitars and like drums you could get these much bigger sounds so technology kind of dictated where music went and i think this is just the natural progression and do i wish there were more guitar bands yeah kind of but like guitarists are generally not very nice people so less of them is probably a good thing sorry everyone you can't undo the genie i guess is is kind of what you're saying pretty much it we like music is going to progress it's usually going to go however technology dictates so uh, get on board or you know be prepared to not have any work but in the early in the early 2000s it felt like it kind of regressed back. I mean, I used to joke that, oh, look, it's generic guitar band 43 <laughs> on the radio. You had like Keen, Kasabian, yeah. all those kind of bands. And they, I mean, is that why you became a guitarist? Were you influenced by that new millennium guitar wave? 
No, uh, I went quite the opposite direction. I didn't. I intentionally wanted to, to listen to music that wasn't the music kids at school were listening to, which was mostly hip hop where I went. So I just went, "What's the opposite of hip hop? Uh, uh, rock music. Uh, that'll do." So then I started listening to you know ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Motley Crue, all of that, and that's it. Was kind of as a reaction to not wanting to be one of the rude boys at school. That's how I got into guitar music. So now you're an individual, just like all your friends. Yes, I'm I'm a rock musician who really, really actually doesn't like rock music that much anymore. <laughs> I listen to way more hip hop than I ever thought I would. So, I mean, for me, it's UK grime all the way. Yeah. Okay, Liam, let's listen to some real music, not electronically produced at all. And we'll also catch up with some weather uh, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about some of the relative value and merit of this and where traditional music, especially for new musicians, still has value. Hang around, Liam Taylor. We'll be back after this. You're listening to Spanners on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire and I'm still talking to music man Liam Taylor in my shed. In the shed with the best of the net. Spanners ready. Liam, so we were talking about the death of music because of all these newfangled uh, processing techniques. It is a little bit like computer programming though, isn't it? Where really there's very few people doing the very base ones and zeros. Don't even know if that's the right phrase. But there's a lot of people that are working the next layer up, taking code that someone else has written and put that in a pre-prepared place for the code. So it's like, okay, so these kids aren't creating the music physically. They're putting together sounds on a program. But you didn't build your guitar, presumably, Liam. No, that's true. I also used online resources and books and other people to teach myself how to play the guitar. So yeah, I guess I'm pretty much a fraud. At some point, <laughs> your whatever you make at some point, whatever you make does rely on someone else's creation. Like I didn't make Cubase, but I use it to make a living. You're right. I didn't chop down a tree, whittle it down to a guitar shape and like string it with nickel or metal or whatever is actually in my strings. So and the veil falls before <laughs> our eyes. Yeah. So the live arena is presumably somewhere, Liam, where the guitar band, and by guitar band, I mean, you know, with the smashy drums and everything, still comes into its own. You're more, you're more likely to pay to go into a pub and have a pint for a traditional band than you are some bloke just spinning some tracks. I think it ultimately depends what you're into. This is one of those it depends answers, I'm afraid. If you're into rock music, oddly enough, you'd think you'd, that might be the kind of person who would go and support local rock music. But I've tend to find with rock and metal fans, they like the rock and metal music that they like. And if it's not Iron Maiden, they ain't showing up. I find that uh, it tends to be electronic music fans or hip hop fans that are more willing to give underground stuff a try, being fully aware that they've never heard of it. And actually, this person might not go anywhere, but they might have a good time. That could just be my experience of hip hop and electronic fans versus metal heads. I don't know how representative that is of real life but yeah that's that's my experience so you're really painting quite a bleak picture is what we're saying that the accessibility of music has kind of made music less of a special thing in that you're not going to get the Beatles and only they can do it and only they have access to the resources the studio and the publicity now that's kind of been spread thin yes and no again I think <sighs> It means that stuff... Answer a darn question, Liam. <laughs> okay, yes. It means yes. Okay. <laughs> I think that it's it's a double-edged sword because if you think about functional music in television, in film, in game, in radio jingles, for example, it doesn't necessarily need to be a masterpiece. It doesn't necessarily need to be that Fleetwood Mac song that everyone knows. It doesn't necessarily need to be the most uh, complex thing in terms of composition and music theory. It can just be beep, boop, beep, boop, on loop for 20 minutes. I love that track. Yeah, beep, boop. It's it's great music. We're, we're playing out this interview with that. So. Ah, oh, brilliant. You should get them live. It's really good. The So in terms of that kind of music, being able to just make something in an hour which is something I do live stream every week. I make a beat boot piece of music in under an hour, two minutes of music, just put it in a package, done, whatever it is it is. So being able to do that is massively convenient for stuff like advertising, stuff like games, as I said. 
So that's great, but it does to an extent mean that if you want to try and make an actual masterpiece, you can tend to fall into the habits of that beep boop jingle music. So yeah, I think if you can kind of uh, partition your brain into being two different kinds of musician, I think you'll be fine. Well, no one expects every podcast they find to be as good as listening to Sarah Cox on Radio 2. And so by that method, just because there's more types of music to enjoy, that doesn't mean that it makes Ariana Grande any less special. Oh, I mean, someone someone cool with music credibility. Who is cool with music credibility nowadays? Ed Sheeran, I suppose. He had a pretty good career and then he ruined it by doing really generic music. So Is he ruined now? Is he penniless and on the streets I, now? He's never going to be penniless. He's set for life. I think he is mostly just writing for some of the bigger names. Even if you can imagine bigger than Ed Sheeran. Then I found it very interesting when you were saying that basically the producer's of the past still were responsible for putting all the talent together. But now what you're getting is that producer is just skipping out more and more of the steps. You know, a lot of the honest tradesmen like yourself, Liam, getting pulled off the factory floor and replaced with a robot or an iPad. Yeah, it's the, the thing that I really like seeing is electronic musicians who add elements of, I'm just going to say traditional instrumentation. So, um, For example, Clean Bandit, who use, I think they have a a viola player or a cello player, as well as like the traditional electronic setup. And I think they've got a live drummer and a singer. So you've got this fusion of electronic and live instrumentation. And lots of bands are doing that in a really fun way. And you can also go the other way. If you think about a band like Royal Blood, for example, they're going the other way. They present as a two-piece rock band, but actually they're using a lot of processing and effects to add layers and layers and layers and layers. So you have this big, thick ensemble sound. Exactly. We all use technology from the electric keyboard my wife takes on gigs to your guitar is a form of technology. But Liam Taylor, LT guitarist on Twitter, we asked you a question at the beginning of this segment, which was, is music ruined? Have you changed your mind on that? Can I stick with kinder? (laughs) Well, thank you very much. Liam Taylor, music is kinder ruined 2019. That's, That's the quote that will follow you around forever. Thank you so much. You can find Liam's work over at Odd Creative, at Odd Creative on Twitter, and stabbedpanda.com for new music. Thanks for your time, Liam. Cheers, Spanners. Thanks so much. 